finding rhythm, finding some road and getting rolling. Absolutely, this is a long race. There's a lot of guys in here, as you say, are going to be doing the big race tomorrow. But there's a lot of drivers in here who have never probably competed at this length of race before. And it is at Bathurst. PD leads the way. He's very comfortable. He's got a big job to do tomorrow. This, for him, is just a warm-up, I'm sure. First time across the top of McPhillamy Park. And they drop on down. There's Ash Walsh, remember. Car number 87, he's fighting for the championship with Paul Umbrell. They are just four points apart coming into this race. With 300 on the line for the win. So this one could make or break the championship with one round to go in season. As we've seen already this weekend, very easy to make a mistake. Paul Dumbrell got through the forest elbow very quickly. He saw the left front of that wheel cocking up. He was pushing hard. He's got a bit of a breather already over Chris Pither. He'll set himself into a rhythm. First time through the chase. Close on 300 k's an hour. They all flow through. Hit us a little bit wide. It's Andre Heimgartner right behind him. They're teammates in the super black car for tomorrow's big race. Oh, but these two young teammates, teammates. They're having their own fight here for position. Lap one down. Car slow on a pit straight. Gary Jacobson got a bit of a bad run there, so he'll have to block that inside line. His teammate tries to go the long way around, but at the line, it's Dumbrell. The margin, 1.1 seconds. This is a good fight at the tail end of the top 10, but we're off and rolling in this 250-kilometre race. A change of format, pit stops. Lots of these guys have not done pit stops. They practiced them in the warm-up this morning. Each team is paired with a V8 Supercar Championship team who will look after the refueling, the car controller. But the Dunlop Series teams must provide the tyre changes. Now, this is Dan Day, one of the debutants. Looks like the right rear is down on the Street Fighter Commodore, one of the young guns from South Australia who is making his debut. But they have to take on 80 litres of fuel, Greg, minimum at the stop and change all four tyres. And the two Dunlop Series crew members, one to do the rears, one to do the fronts, but it's tyres first and then fuel. It's like a GT race, so they can't do both at the same time. No, they're keeping that separate. It's a little bit of a test to see how that plays out. I think it's a good thing for these guys. It's a safety situation as well, but giving the responsibility of the fueling to the teams that are doing it the most often, obviously, the, the, the main game series guys, they'll be plugging into those cars and controlling that. This is getting pretty tight here. Jacobson's quite slow across the top. Peterson's got his headlights on. Hype Gardner's looking for an advantage. So it's pretty racy here early. A little bit of a lock from the inside of the finance. Easy Falcon. On to Conrad now. now. Having these two Eggleston Motorsport cars running together is an important point because they are not allowed to stack for their pit stops here in this 250 kilometer race. So it's one car in at a time. You can see Dan Day here in pit lane. This is one of the ex Walkinshaw racing cars. It's the car Nick Perkett won with here a couple of years ago in that great fight with Chas Mostert. Have a look at the fight here though. Dumbrell is under fire from Chris Pither. Oh, I think he must have had a mis made a mistake yeah, definitely. there. Definitely. Chase, Aaron, and definitely. Pither is all over him. That's time across the line. See that. Dumbrell 11-4, Pither 10-5. So that is where nine-tenths has gone. And Dumbrell looks edgy at turn one there. Remember, Chris Pither's driving a Brad Jones racing prepared car in this ice break coffee car. So it's BJR, the main game team, that will service the BJR DVS car. So having a team that is in both categories works well for Unison. It works well for understanding process in the background. Cameron Waters putting the pressure on Andrew Jones. There's been no doubt this year Cam is quick, but he's made too many mistakes. He's crashed. He's made just a couple too many errors. This is the stage to settle it down. It's lap three of 41. Yeah, Jones uh, gave him no room there. He moved right across to the right-hand side of the track. Under no illusion was he going to give Cam Waters. He's a replay of the start. They get away pretty cleanly in their positions. Nothing too much untoward going into turn one. Everyone taking it nice and easy. 
making sure they get away cleanly. Here's a bit of a replay. It's out of the chase. Oh, there's the contact. That's McCauley Jones, who Dave got involved with in a new livery. Rockstar Commodore, cut number 12. Well, Dave's made a bit of a mistake. He's coming way too deep. Couldn't pull the car up. And reasonably heavy contact there on the right front. Safety We've got cars. a safety car. Safety cars going out, Greg, as we look at this replay of... Young McCauley Jones, first time at Bathurst in a V8, the son, of course, of Tim BOC owner Brad Jones. And a great new livery there, Rockstar yeah. Energy Drink on the BJR Commodore. And a replay here. This is the Dumbrell drama down at the chase. There he is, a little bit wide. Similar to what he did in the main race last year. So he's carried a little bit too much speed. We're going to see a replay here. Into the wall. Oh, Marcus Sukanovic's in the fence. In. I have seen that happen before. Oh, yes, you have. 12 months ago. That's a shame. And the safety car is on the road. The former VAU champ is done. And that's caused massive, massive damage. We'll get this cleaned up and come back soon. Marcus Sukanovic's day is done. We're under safety car here at Bathurst with the 250k Dunlop Series Enduro. The cars are rolling around. Paul Dumbrow leads the way. Big day of sport here on 7, not just here at Mount Panorama for the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. Horse racing today at Royal Randwick in Caulfield, and that's where we find Bruce McAvaney. Well, we know it's a huge day at Bathurst, as it is here at Caulfield. Caulfield Guineas Day, four Group 1s for the first time on this day. Absolute crackerjack program. The favourite for the Guineas is a horse called Rich Enough. It's a rags-to-riches story. If it wins, it'll be one of the great stories. And the Caulfield Stakes today, so strong. The four favourites for the Cox Plate, all taking one another on. And for the first time, we've got five international horses racing here. A great day, all live right now on 7-2. And the cars are on their way, Bruce, down Conrod Strait here under safety car. Marcus Sikanovic, if you've just joined us, has crashed at the top of the mountain. This is the 41 lap Wilson Medic 1 Enduro for the Dunlop Series. And that's the leftovers, Craig Murphy. It's plucked the fuel tank out of that car and sprayed fuel everywhere. This is how it's happened. Well, this can happen to anybody. Uh, it can. It, it can. It has. It can, it can happen yeah, to yeah, anybody. Yeah, yeah. Look, at, look at Jeff Emery. Oh, he did a good how job. How did he? Yeah, good that was job. very well done to not get caught up in Marcus's accident. Tricky. We've seen the track being very, very difficult this weekend. We've seen a lot of cars having problems all the way around. There he is, giving a wave to the chopper. Marcus will not be happy. That's a that's done a lot of damage. You can see that the fire marshal's there taking care of the, the fuel that has been spilt. And this is a replay of Macaulay Jones getting unloaded down at the chase by Dan Day. Just went in a little bit too hot. You can see a little bit of damage to the uh, right front there on Day's car. Hopefully Macaulay's cars and damage will be able to get back into this 41 lap Dunlop race. Remember too, Greg, we do have a time certain finish for this one, but we are in a safety car at the moment while we get Marcus Sukanovic's car cleaned up at the top of the mountain. Ford Umbrell is the leader. Chris Pith is second. Andrew Jones rounds out the top three. We'll take another break. Come back to Bathurst in just a moment. An engine that lasts is as important to race performance as a great driver. With shaving, it's no different. One Gillette Mark III blade lasts up to 30 days and also with zero redness guaranteed. And just by picking up any Mark III product, you could be in the running to win an all-new HSV Club Sport R8. Featuring a race-bred 340-kilowatt 6.2-litre V8 engine, AP race brakes, 20-inch alloy wheels, and bimodal exhaust. You could be the envy of your mates. So get into Woolworths and pick up a Mark III. Then head to yahoo7.com.au forward slash Gillette Mark III to enter. All thanks to Gillette Mark III. Top of the mountain at the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. It is all about the Dunlop series at the moment, and we are still under safety car at the moment. Paul Dumbrell is the leader as we get Marcus Sukanovic's car cleaned up and towed away. But let's head down a pit later. Rihanna Green's with us for this race. And Rihanna, you're with a lady who's going to join this series next year. Some great news breaking today at Bathurst. You said it right there. Breaking news that we have, that we can bring to you right now. Renee Gracie, who's currently in the Porsche Carrera Cup Series, will be joining the Dunlop Series in 2015. Renee, exciting news that you can tell us today. Yeah, extremely exciting. Um, it's 
is definitely a step that I've been wanting to take now, being in Porsche. Uh, Dunlop's definitely been something that we've been looking towards. So I'm extremely excited for 2015 and can't wait to jump in. And Fujitsu, your current sponsor, will be joining you on the grid next year. Can you tell us anything about the car? Um, I don't know much yet, unfortunately, but um, I know I've been told the car will stand out. Uh, Fujitsu have been a great help and support, obviously, two years in the Porsche and now in the development series. So they've been great help and I'm really looking forward to it. This is obviously a very important in your stepping stone to one day make it your first, the first female in the V8 Supercar Series full time. Yeah, so obviously Dunlop is something that I have to kind of tackle to get to the V8. So it's one step closer to my dream of racing in the V8 Supercars. So yeah, it's extremely exciting. And um, I guess it's a stepping stone that I've been wanting to take for a while and obviously hopefully get there in the near future. So I'm, yeah, stoked. Thanks very much for your time, Renee. And good luck next year. Thank you, thanks. Thanks, Rihanna. We'll see Renee in action this afternoon in Porsche Carrera Cup. Let's have a look at the highlights of what we've had so far of this Dunlop Series race. Hasn't been a great deal. There's been a more safety car laps than green. Paul Umbrell made the jump. The Royal Wolf Commodore was off and rolling. Chris Pith are chasing. Dan Day, ooh, made a mistake. Couple of rookies getting together. He and McCauley Jones down at Caltex Chase. Day ended up in pit lane with some repairs required. And then this, Marcus Ukanovic plows the fence. Jeff Emery somehow didn't. And that is why the safety car is out. Marcus could at least wave and say that he was OK. His car, though, is not. So hence why we are under the control of the safety car and rolling around the mountain because the real tricky part there, Greg, was that that car plucked the fuel tank out, so it's leaked a, a lot of fuel out. Uh, I know you've got a big day tomorrow, but will you be awake tonight? I think you should be. Shannon's Legends of Motorsport Marathon, 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. on 7, mate. That's the best I won't way. Miss it. That's I'm the not best gonna way. Miss that. It is the best way for you to prepare for a big day at the mountain tomorrow. I'm not going to miss that. I will be up all night all preparing. The all the legends, Alan Moffat will be there, Jim Richards, some of the great shows that we've brought to you so far this year. You can relive them. Plenty of Bathurst memories as well to get you in the mood for a big day tomorrow at the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. So we're on lap 6 of 41. This is a 250 kilometre race and it's a chance for these guys, Greg, to reset their brain and have almost a, a whole new start. Yeah, take a little breather, have a little drink. Hopefully the drink, uh, drink systems are working in the car. She'll be getting hot in there behind the safety car with no airflow going through them. So uh, it's been a few laps now. The cleanup has taken place. As you said before, Aaron, there it was a lot of fuel dumped on the side of the track just at the exit where these, these cars are here, just under the Fujitsu Bridge. So Mark Zikanovic luckily got out of that unscathed. We have seen a lot of cars in the fence this weekend. The track has been tricky. The surface, brand new, beautifully smooth, but it has been delivering some interesting situations on the track. There's a great shot of the seven camera chopper giving us some amazing pictures this weekend. And right there is the sort of shot that you can see. That's the run over Brock Skyline, of course, named in honor of the nine-time Bathurst 1000 winner. And as this safety car field rolls on around, but I tell you what, if you're a bit of a Peter Brock fan, I tell you what, when it comes to merchandise and memorabilia, have a look at this, you can have your own Peter Brock trophy. Of course, it was first created back in 2006 when we lost the king of the band. It's what they're racing for tomorrow. You can have your own replica Peter Brock trophy at the shop.v8supercars.com.au website. And then this Peter Brock lithogram showing all of his nine wins and those memorable moments that have really stayed with us all. And a piece of jacket from his last Bathurst year. You should get you one of them, Gregory. One of them. That's pretty cool. That'll look good on the wall. And I also want to get one of those trophies for the big one. You want the, the big, big one. one? Well, you have your chance. Come tomorrow alongside James Courtney in the number 22 HRT Commodore. Now, restart is coming this time by for the Dunlop Series. Paul Dunbrow will lead us away. Remember, he's one of 10 drivers on double duty in the Dunlop Series and tomorrow's big race. Brad Jones, he's got three cars in this race. He's got three cars in the main race tomorrow. He's got three cars in the shootout this afternoon. He looks as nervous now. That's what he's going to be tomorrow, I have no doubt. What a great performance yesterday by VJR. Yeah, they've had a great run and they're sitting pretty here. Chris Pither is second for them. Remember, he co-drives with Dale Wood, who is in the shootout this afternoon. That was awesome. He qualified third, and I think he was screaming on the radio all the way up to turn two. I think we didn't have to listen to the radio to hear him screaming. It was a great last second into the shootout moment. It was fantastic. Paul Dumbrell leads them away. The green flags are waving. He's in control. He will accelerate when he feels the need. Everyone else has to follow him. And we can see him go just before the braking zone into the last corner. Chris Pither sticks with him nicely. A little break over Andy Jones. Cam Waters looking for an opportunity. They all run through Haber wide. 
impressed with Chris Pitha. He's going with Paul Dumbrell. Cole Dunlop tyres, turn one awaits, and we start to climb them out. So they really haven't had a chance to get rolling. Here's a, a story we need to cover. That's Dan Pedersen, the Kiwi. While that safety car was out, he's been in for fuel. He still needs to do a tyre stop under the regulations, but he needs to take on 80 litres of fuel. What is the time? Going for third, but the point with Pedersen is, when he does do his tyres, very short fill of fuel, he'll come back up the order. Watch for car 38 later on. Look at this. Jones under fire. He can't go through there. You know. I've tried that one too. <laughs> Hasn't worked. He's back next year, that guy, you know. He is that back, that guy. Yeah, that'll yeah. be good. Yes. Can't wait still get asked about that one. Anyway, they flow through. <laughs> Cam Waters managed to get himself into third position ahead of Andrew Jones. Walsh is looking racy behind. The two leaders. Oh, Jacobson. He used every single bit of road there. As they stream over McFillany. Cam Waters in the NZ car. Remember, he teams with Jack Perkins tomorrow. Jack is in the top 10 shootout this afternoon for the Geldwin and Charlie Schmerkoff team. Andrew Jones, of course, he's with Jason Bright. He's in the shootout as well. And Ash Walsh, who has not had car pace this weekend. In the he's looking forward, down the he's inside. Going for the oh, he's going to leave contact. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Got done. Hey, they had to both yield to get that done. And Jacobson's going to get a run here on Jones. He was very slow through. The apex because of that move by Walsh. There's going to be an aero battle here down the chute. These two cars pushing a lot of air. And that's Andre and Heimgartner. You can see a change here as the yeah. Falcon gets in behind Jacobson. He's going to go around the outside of Jones. He's going to lose a couple more spots. It's three in the space of the Conrad Strait. It's a two-for-one deal there. And Andre Heimgartner picked the right one to go with. That's Aaron Russell. New backing from Plus Fitness for him in that new look car this weekend. Paul Morris lined up behind. Then Todd Hazelwood, then Morgan Haver. So plenty of young guys here. Uh, not too surprising to see pit lane penalty for Dan Day from the contact early on with McCauley Jones. Here's this the is Walsh making the lunge at the elbow. And initially, Jones turns in and then goes, ooh, car there. Better not keep doing that. And he was well in there, too. He made that decision nice and early, Ash Walsh. He got the car way down the inside. Here he is, getting a little bit of a gap now over Jacobson. And as you said, Peterson, they came in early. Got a little bit of the fuel side of things done, so their next pit stop is going to be a lot shorter. So we'll see how that plays out. Keep an eye on it. I'm really interested to see how this all falls out because there are composite crews. Todd Hazelwood here putting a move on. Oh, there's a terrace. Oh, that was lucky. Very lucky to get away with that one. Morgan Haver now gets the run on the run up the shelf towards the cutting. Just has to lift out of it there. Now he's back into the cake. Now he's not. That's the smart move. That was the best way to play that one. Chief Emery looks on after that uh, very good evasion of Zucanovic when he was in the fence. Right there. Right there. Dumbrell sneaking away there. Nine tenths for Chris Pippa. Well, we saw in the start, he got a bit of a gap. He made that mistake down at the chase, which cost him a lot of time, and he took a little bit of time to get the uh, the tyres cleaned up again. Had to put the pressure on, but he's just set down a lap time half a second quicker than the BJR driver. Jazz Mostert watching on. Paul I Morris. He, I actually don't know if he is. Oh, I just can't see the eyes, glasses, but oh, I just thought I'd go with it. But, of course, Paul Morris teams up with him in car six for tomorrow's race. That They are the most diametrically opposed pair. Chaz has done one in Bathurst. <laughs> Paul Morris has done a pile of them. And, of course, they start from the back tomorrow because Chaz was excluded for a red flag infringement in qualifying yesterday. There is the black flag on display for Dan Day, who needs to take a pit lane penalty. We're looking here at Josh King. He's teaming up with Tony Delberto in the number three car. They're 14th at the moment. But we're back to green flag racing at Bathurst. Paul Umbrell leads the way. He's eyeing another Dunlop Series crown. Let's see how this one rolls. More from Bathurst in just a moment. It's a big weekend at Mount Panorama. There's so much to see and do. This entire city gets involved. Of course, earlier in the weekend, the transport parade was in town. Even Todd Kelly was driving one. Uh, he's, he's downsized for tomorrow's great race at the Jack Daniels Nissan, but plenty of chance to catch up with the drivers, grab plenty of autographs, some interesting hair on display too. Don't like that one. I <laughs> uh, had a funny feeling you might say that, Gregory. We pick it up in terms of the Dunlop series, which is rolling on around the mountain. Don't forget, top 10 shootout. We will determine pole position for tomorrow's big race live today, 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Make sure you are bolted to the couch for that one because the pace has been 
electrifying this weekend with his new surface. This is a replay at the chase. Brett Stewart here. Oh, with Dan Day. That's close. That's 285 k's an hour. Ash Walsh, championship challenger in the fence. This is at Reed Park, the approach to McPhillamy. He's, He's gone, gone in the fence. At the exit of Reed Park, they're coming out of the dip after the grade. He's gone into the fence. A little bit like David Reynolds yesterday. Damage to the car is reasonably significant. That is a huge situation. That's the Matt Stone Racing team. They're paired up for the pit stops with Dick Johnson Racing, hence why they're in the Wilson Security Garage. You can see Ash get out of the car. This could be, Greg, a championship over. If Dumbrell wins the race, gets 300 points, Ash gets none, he was four down coming in, Dumbrell would be 304 in front with only 300 to get in Sydney. Dumbrell would win the championship right here, right now. This is devastating for Ash Walsh. She's been doing a great job all year, working really hard. He's had some ups and downs, some of them not his fault too. Now, Here's Cam Waters, they're diving for the pits. The safety car has been deployed. And this is interesting, Greg, because we've gone 10 laps completed. He won't, they will get about 25 laps out of a tank of fuel. They're running the 120 litre tank in this car. So he won't make it to the end on fuel, but he'll get his four tires done. This is a really interesting play by the boys at Ford Performance Racing. You'll see that they're using the super black team boom down the other end of pit lane. What you'll see now is where these teams and drivers pair up with the main championship teams of who services their car. Remember, Dunlop team provides two tyre changes. Main game team provides the fueling. Oh, we saw Peter Brock do this one day. He nearly catches it. This nearly. So close to what happened to oh, David geez. Reynolds as well. He was very wide coming down to the grate. No one rear stepped out oh. on that car and there he got the grass. Yeah, that really is a shame. He's done a good job this year. Runner-up in last year's championship. He'll drive with Scott Pye for Dick Johnson's team tomorrow. They were fifth at Sandown a few weeks ago. So there's Cam Waters. He's taken service in the NZ car. Paul Morris has been in. Pit lane's getting busy. Just here with Chaz Mostert watching on to the Dunlop series. Uh, Chaz, so similar to that accident of Ash Walsh to, to your one last year and, of course, David Reynolds this weekend. Now, let's talk about you in the qualifying yesterday, excluded from the qualifying session, passing a car under a red flag. You, unfortunately, will be starting the race from last position, but positive spin on that. It has been done before, and it's going to make for an interesting race. Yeah, for sure. Made a bad driver call yesterday, passed the car under red, uh, a red flag condition, which is definitely uh, no go. So, um, yeah, my fault. And, um, yeah, you know, we, we got a pretty good race car. So, 26 is a long way back. We were... A, same position last year in the Greens Tough Falcon at DJR, but um, the car wasn't quite right after crash it. So this year we're making baby steps. So we've got a straight car. The car's pretty quick in race mode. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Keep it clean and it's a long day. And, and like you said, it's been done before. So fingers crossed. I love your optimism, Chad. Good That's luck. Good. It's good. Thank you. <laughs> so Ash Walsh's car removed from where it's crashed. And really interesting to see how that's played out because Cam Waters came in, Paul Morris came in. Remember that they've done 10, they've got, got 30 to go. You can get 25 laps on a tank. We have a time certain finish though, so they're rolling the dice and playing the game differently to those up the front. There's no doubt that Paul Dumbrell has the fastest car at the moment. Hearing we're going to get a restart next time by Greg. So as we touched on, Ash Walsh, the championship contender, who was fighting with Paul Dumbrell, is out of the race. That's what's caused this second safety car period. And if Dumbrell wins, he banks 300 points. He was four coming in. There's only 300 on the line in the last round on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. So Paul Dumbrell could become a two-time Dunlop Series champion today here at Bathurst. 12 years since he won his first one when he was at the other end of the V8 career pathway on the way up. Well, a fair bit's happened since then. He's also won a Bathurst 5,000 as well, JB Wincup. And this year, He's done the double at Sandown, won the Sandown 500 again. So his career has gone a long way since back in those days. And now he's going to reverse, go back, back, back to the 